Welcome back on this lovely day. Um, if my voice sounds a little funny, it's because my body doesn't do well with the combination of high stress, little sleep, and sudden temperature changes. Uh, because deep down inside, I am a sickly Victorian child whose body cannot deal with the sudden onset of autumn. So yeah, I'm just here with my tea, just absolutely loaded up with honey, um, in a mug that is adequately seasonal, but mostly I bought because it's machine washable, has a fantastic shape, and also was on sale for six dollars. Anyways, let's get into the drawing. Right off the bat, you might notice something a little strange. Uh, my screen looks somewhat stretched and the edges of my drawing program are cut off. When I started my screen recording, I didn't realize that I had some of the settings changed in OBS. And unfortunately, it stays in this sort of awkward stretched out look for a while, but I do eventually uh, figure out that something is off and fix it. So I apologize for the stretched or squashed drawing for the first few minutes, but hopefully it doesn't ruin your enjoyment of watching the drawing process too much. As you might have figured out from the thumbnail or title of this episode, we're here with the redrawing childhood characters challenge again. Today's drawing features two characters, Woody and Woody Ya. In the original drawing, Woodya actually was a redraw slash remake of Woody. I think I felt Woody was too masculine of a name, and I also had really gotten into drawing in a manga style specifically, which also somewhat explains the drastic hair color change, I think. However, I would like to amend my past story, and hopefully younger me doesn't mind. I think Woody is a great name, um, and there was a lot of meaning and insight with that name choice at the time, and instead of replacing the old with the new, I'm making them mother and daughter. You may have also noticed that I'm drawing them in outfits that are very different from the original outfits they are portrayed in. While this isn't an uncommon trend for my redraws, this particular outfit was a uniform specific to all characters who trained to become very skilled martial artists in the little world that I had created. Um, there were maybe around eight characters that were part of this elite society of warriors, and of course, most of them were women. I mean, mostly because I was not slash am not good at drawing male figures, but still. I decided to not portray Woody and Woodya in their uniforms because this is a sort of transitional period in their lives. Uh, the headcanon I have, well, I guess it's technically canon because it's my world, but anyways. It's that Woody wants to start a family, and she does her best to be a good mother for the child and tries to keep her work life separate from her family life. Uh, think of very Yor and Anya from spy family relationship. Um, however, because obviously Woodya is an anime protagonist with her bright orange hair, Woody's work eventually catches up to her and spills into Woodya's life. After the sudden death of her mother, Woodya is faced with the choice to live life ignorant of the horrible subplots that will forever plague her subconscious, or she can walk the dangerous road that her mother took. And Woodya can't help but take after her mother, so she seeks to avenge and take revenge, um, and all the good cliché story tropes. I also thought for a second that Woody very much resembled Julia Le Petit from Drawfee, so there's that. <laughs> now, you may think it's cruel of me to kill off Woody just because Woodya throws off anime protagonist vibes. However, my argument is, look at Woody's hair. It's anime dead mom hair. It's like the story wrote itself. Interestingly enough, I'm having a very hard time pinning down exactly when I drew Woody and Woodya. I thought I had a vague idea, but the name choice and the drawing style don't quite line up. So bear with me while I try to detective this timeline out. So I'm not sure if later generations had the same problem as mine, but a lot of kids, like when we were younger, we had a big history era. There were Greek history, mythology, like Percy Jackson kids, and then of course there was like the World War II history buffs, and I knew someone who had like an Egyptian history phase, and I also had a couple strange history phases. Um, I was really obsessed with Mayan and Aztec culture for a while, and then for some reason there was a short bit where I was very invested in the French Revolution. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing that I have memories of 
is being very fascinated with the rise and fall of empires over the course of Chinese history. I was so sure that this Chinese history phase hadn't started until 7th grade. However, the manga drawing style of Wu Dia is very characteristic of a drawing style that I picked up at the start of middle school. And the original Wu Di was clearly drawn quite a while before then, which means the only true conclusion I can draw about timelines and my age is that I have been a nerd for way longer than I originally thought. And it's not even that I was ever good at history, I was just interested in it. I'm really bad at geography, horrible at remembering dates and important people, but I really love learning about cultural practices and the way introducing different ideas and goods to a country changed the way society functioned and technological advancements. Which is why a lot of the locations in my map are based on incredibly inaccurate historic versions of different places in the world. I had ancient Greece, colonial America, I even had like a prehistoric section with dinosaurs and stuff. Um, and obviously there is a section inspired by China. Admittedly, this resulted in some questionably racist sounding character and location names because I was quite young and the finer points of displaying admiration without sounding offensive were lost on me. Nonetheless, many of the names were taken directly from history lessons and philosophers or emperors that just caught my interest. Wu Di is actually a name that was given to an emperor who was originally named Liu Che. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He was an emperor during the Han Dynasty. He wasn't the firstborn son, but it was decided by his relatives when he was just seven years old that he would secure the throne. Long story short, he was very aggressive with his troops and expanded the region of control that China had by a significant amount. And for his military conquests, he is remembered as Wu Di, meaning Martial Emperor. He did a couple of other interesting things in his lifetime. Just, yeah, if you ever want to get a more accurate description of his influence as Emperor, it's a fun little rabbit hole to go down. Anyways, you didn't come here for a history lesson, so let's return to the art bit. I have a very hard time drawing children. Their proportions are just so funky, like, why are your eyes and your head so big? Um, so I spend a lot of time just working through colors and shading and expression, uh, trying to get something that looks relatively childlike and not so alien or uncanny valley. A thing that helps with this is the hood on Woody's raincoat. It disguises her head shape, uh, allows for a lot more dramatic shading, and also pushes her fluffy orange hair to the front so the focus isn't so much on the features of her face. I also try to soften everything, except I do leave these little peaks in the fold above her eyes because, uh, as always, I'm projecting into these characters and this is something that my husband points out in my face that whenever I'm anxious or worried about something, even if my expression hasn't changed much or I'm just laying in bed, he says my eyes get these little peaks that expose how actually worried I am. So I wanted to get the I'm saying hello to you and smiling but only because my mom told me to and not because I trust you or anything look that a lot of children have. I don't think I nailed it or anything but at least I know it's there. Here I pick a very blue shading for the shadows and just the overall palette is not super bright and fairly pastel looking. I think it's sort of a subconscious nod towards Naoko Takeuchi. I hope I'm also saying that right. Um, the creator of Sailor Moon. Um, a lot of her work isn't necessarily pastel, but it's very light and soft watercolory looking stuff that I think is very beautiful. And yes, I am aware this is a white lady with a Chinese name who is having a slice of life turned action Japanese anime backstory. Don't at me. I'm just trying to stay true to the original designs and names and then shoehorning the story tropes I love to see in media that I consume. Cough cough anime, cough cough spy family. <laughs> I don't know if any of you watch Gab Smulders or her hidden object games or hogs. Um, lately I've been absolutely obsessed with watching them. She has a bingo sheet generator. 
for the cliches and tropes um, and her viewers can fill out a bingo sheet while she streams or while watching the video and since that's what's been on my mind lately if I were to create a Lady Splitchin artist bingo I would definitely put um, arbitrary letters slash misspelled word for drawing file name as one of the bingo squares. If you are curious, this drawing is primarily for featuring Woody and not Woodya. I definitely intend on drawing a separate Woodya piece. Um, if I ever have enough energy for it, I would love to do a like dynamic movement shot of Woodya training with the uh, uniform on. I think that would be pretty cool, but again, dynamic movement takes a lot of brain cells, so <laughs> probably goes on the shelf for now. Although I did just have a thought, how sick would it be if I drew like, like a training montage, <laughs> like a page out of a manga, or like, or like a webtoon scroll with all the warriors helping to train Wudia? That's a pretty cool idea, but also an idea that also takes a lot of brain cells. Although maybe it would make a cool two-part video, like the first part being character design and just sketching and the second part being lining and coloring. Maybe? Who knows? Oh, here's where I remember that I totally did not give Woody any eyebrows at all, so I add them in, and I actually don't give Woody uh, eyebrows uh, at all. This is intentional um, because, you know, kids with very fair and fine hair uh, sometimes look like they have no eyebrows or their eyebrows are just like barely there. Um, I also figured that Woodia had lots of fluffy hair that would be covering it up anyways and I didn't really feel like working around the hair too much after uh, doing so much work to render it. So yeah, that's why Woodia doesn't have any eyebrows. <laughs> Yeah, then I add a fun little background because the space felt empty, but here it is. I am quite pleased with how this has turned out. Of course, there are little things here and there that I'm disappointed with, but honestly, with how sluggish I've been feeling lately and how much work I've been having to keep up with, I think I churned out a pretty cute and wholesome piece of art. It's bonus art, unlike the back cover of a manga called my life as the daughter of a martial arts master. Although that makes it sound like an isekai and it isn't really. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for sticking around. I am so blown away to be already at 68 subscribers after only three months. That's insane. I know it's like nothing <laughs> compared to big art YouTubers, but still, I'm like, I'm like a little podunk mushroom lady. What are you all doing here listening to me talk about Chinese emperors and make excuses for not wanting to draw hands. Y'all are crazy. But I love you so much. And as for me, I'm going to go make myself another cup of tea to try and get my voice and body back in working order. And hopefully next video, I don't feel so scrungly. But who knows? Not me.